Hi, I'm Nico, and we're going to learn about heat and temperature and our sense of temperature. Heat and temperature are all around us. For example, if we want some food, we might go to the refrigerator and grab it because it's cold. And then we might put it in the microwave to make it hot to eat. So what's really happening with our food when we do this? For example, when I grab this piece of ice, it's cold to touch. It's almost hard to hold. I put it against my face and it's chilling. But when I bring out my electric kettle and I open the top, I see steam coming out of it because it's so hot. This ice and this kettle are made of the same thing, but they feel different to hold and they have different senses of temperature. So what's really going on? Inside of these objects are really tiny molecules, things smaller than these grains of rice, which are going to represent the molecules. In the really hot objects, these molecules are moving super duper fast. They're pressing against the walls really, really quickly, causing the object to be really, really hot. Inside the really cold objects, such as the ice, the molecules are moving really slowly and it feels cold to touch. So today, we're going to learn about why that is. Why can't I feel the difference between how cold ice is and how hot this steaming water is? Why are we able to do that as humans and what makes it possible? So our first activity for today is for you to find the coldest object in your house. Now you may be thinking, I'm just going to go to my freezer or my fridge and find a cold object there. But no, we challenge you to find the coldest object to touch that's not in your fridge or freezer. We're going to give you two minutes to do this and then come back with your cold object and start the video again. Okay, now that we're back, what object did you pick? Using my sense of temperature, I picked a porcelain mug. Now, to my hand, the mug doesn't feel too cold. When I press it up against my cheek, it feels significantly colder. So the question is, why is that? Why does the mug feel colder to my cheek than it does my hand? This is because of something called thermoreceptors. Thermoreceptors are nerve cells, which in this case help us detect temperature. And there are a lot more nerve cells in my cheek than the palm of my hand. So, when you were running around the house trying to find as cold of an object as you could, you were using your thermoreceptors to determine which object was the coldest and which objects were just too hot. Okay, now the question is, why did I take a porcelain mug out of everything in this room? For example, this tissue box was in the same room. So why does this feel colder than the tissue box? This is because of something called thermal conductivity. Thermal conductivity is an object's ability to transfer heat from itself to another object. Now remember, heat transfers from hot to cold. So when I press the mug against my face, heat is transferring from my face to the mug. And this is because the mug has high conductivity and allows that to happen. But for the cardboard, when I press it to my face, it has really low conductivity meaning that heat doesn't transfer between me and the cardboard very well. And I don't really feel anything. It doesn't feel hot. It doesn't feel cold. So that's why it's important. Different materials have different amounts of ability to transfer heat. For example, metals all have high conductivities, while something like cardboard or paper or fabric may not have as high of a conductivity. Now that we've learned about conductivity, I challenge you to hold your object for 30 seconds. Initially, it should feel kind of cold to pick up your object. And especially for this ice, there's almost like a jolt of cold at the beginning. But as we hold it for longer and longer, two things happen. Number one, our body is hotter than these objects. So heat is transferring from our body to the objects. And number two, our thermoset receptors are adjusting to the temperature of the objects 
And as the more they adjust, the less signals they send to the brain about how cold the object is. That means your body's not telling your brain as much how cold the object is because it already knows how cold it is. It's super cool how your body is able to adjust to these temperatures. And it's one of the reasons that if you jump into a cold pool, it's super cold at the beginning, but then slowly your body adjusts to it because your brain knows that you're in a cold pool already. So this is exactly how thermoreceptors work. And this is how we understand temperature. So I'm excited for you to see in your everyday life how temperature and your sense of temperature affects you.